our show, talking real life. Sophisticated melanin, we gotta feel right. Men and women, black culture, yeah, that's real life. Yeah, that's real life. Put it in the air. What up, what up, what up? Welcome to episode 167 of the Panera Podcast. Your boy, George D. Got Tone Sess. You, you. Asia, Asia. Be here soon. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe right now. YouTube is shout y'all out. Um, y'all can always go to our Instagram page at Pintap underscore podcast. Hit that link there. It'll give you the um, different links we have to use so you can subscribe to the audio platform of your choice or on YouTube as well. So make sure y'all both, um, y'all subscribed on both. Um, so welcome back another week. We got a special episode right now. So before we even jump this thing off, we're going to first shout out the fact that on June 5th, we got our Gemini season brunch vibes. Oh, yeah. I said Gemini season vibes, brunch and dinner party. I'm, I'm missing it all up. It's a special edition of Cocktails and Dreams. Or is it Dreams and Cocktails or Cocktails, uh, and, cocktails and Dreams? Cocktails and Dreams. <clears throat> to my right and to Tony's left. We got Tommy in the building, y'all. So this is how this brunch thing came about. So one day, let's go back. Let's go even further back. One day, <laughs> my man got a food truck. <laughs> I'm in front of the food truck. I'm being greedy. And then behind me, I hear, what's up, George? <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> And it's Tommy. I haven't seen Tommy in years, y'all. So I'm like, you, what's up? Uh-huh. Won't say what was happening behind me, but it was a good time. <laughs> so, so then over the time goes by, time goes by, I'm watching him on Instagram, watching him on Instagram, and I'm seeing what he got going on. I'm like, damn, I like that. I got to go support. So I found me a friend who was like, look, I need some help. I said, I got you. Let me take you down on H Street real quick. We run running H Street. We run into the spot called Up and Down. It's really go up and go down up in that day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A nice situation. The joint is laid out. I see all this merch everywhere. The display's on point. The customer service is A1. I'm like, look, man, I just brought you a customer show love. We jumped on the gram, shouted it out. That was that. Later on, I see him saying, yo, gee, there's another, there's another site opening. I was like, oh, up and down is doing good. Close. DC got two <laughs> spots now. Loving that. A little bit more time going on. Then I see another shout out. This joint <laughs> called the Ella Grace. I'm like, damn, this dude is moving around. What is the Ella Grace? Keep pubbing it, keep pubbing it, keep pubbing it. And so finally, I go to the Ella Grace. I walk in. I, I Actually, I was chilling. I hit him up. I said, yo, Tom, what's up? Like, uh, what's up with y'all? We're like, what's, what's, what's going on today? He like, nah, I got you. I was like, can, can I get in there at one? He like, yeah, I got you. Pull up. I come upstairs. I'm seated. In a corner, I'm nice, lit up. I'm like, all right, I like the vibe. I like the energy. Feels like home in here. Nice wooden floors, plush seating. Got a little antique slash modernness vibe to it. I'm like, I kind of like this thing. Real chill. They first, I thought it was neglecting me. Downstairs is lit. The music is on point. The bartender, the waitresses, everybody's having a great time downstairs. <laughs> I'm like, dang, I want some music up here too. Right? <laughs> so I talked to them. they like, I got you. Shortly after Tommy comes upstairs, he got me. Now I'm upstairs, I'm right. Place an order for some uh, shrimp and grits. The shrimp and grits come out, not even like I expected it. It got crab in it. It got all this other stuff. It was plated right. I'm like, what? All right. Then I ordered a French toast. I was like, but I'm being greedy. I was like, can I get this? You're OD now. (laughs) Can I get the French toast? They're like, oh, we got the blueberry, the strawberry. I asked the uh, waitress. I'm like, yo, which one? She's like, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. What kind of vibe are you in? Do you want strawberry? Do you want blueberry? I said, can I get a half and half? She said, I'll be right back. Let me double check. That doesn't happen typically, y'all. Normally, it's what you get. (laughs) What you you see on the menu is what you get. She runs downstairs. She comes back in a jiffy. She says, yo, I got you. Chef said he got you. Comes back upstairs some moments later, and I got a blend. The blueberry and the strawberry uh, French toast. And ladies and gentlemen, I start eating this thing. I'm like, God damn. She come back. I'm like, yo, this need to be on the menu. Somebody's missing out. They need both. They need a half and half. 
Come back Tommy. I'm like, yo, Tommy, this shit hitting, bro. I can't even talk to you right now. After I leave it, I'm like, look, we need to do a brunch here. My birthday's in June. Gemini season is among us. Yeah. This, is, this is the only way it needs to start. We need to start with a dope brunch. Put in a podcast. We love the people. And Tommy's a people's man. He's always been rocking me. Always showed me mad love and support. So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you. Tommy Lee, D.C., the guy who's the owner and proprietor of Up and Down, um, a dispensary here in D.C., and the Ella Grace, y'all. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like, looking for the applause. Yeah, it's right. all good. Yeah, late yeah, late yeah, applause. Yeah, we can get the late applause. We can delete out the rest. Oh, it's all good. You know how this joint be. But, um, <laughs> so once again, June 5th, I gassed it up, but it's real. Like, it's a really dope spot. Nice and intimate. I love the staff. It's a people's vibe. Um, but at the same time, it's going to be a dope brunch. We got a lot of DJs coming through. We got three DJs that set three different type of vibes for you over the course of the, uh, the eight hours that you can be there. It's from 12 to 8, pretty much. So y'all going to love it. Chef Eric Jackson is amazing. The dude is a real, he's a monster in that kitchen. Diggs, amazing mixologist. This dude makes drinks. He don't even remember what he just made and then be fire. He just like, <laughs> I can, but I can do it again. Like he did it for me before. I was like, yo, can you do something I could post on the gram? He's like, yeah, I got you. Whole time he talking to somebody else, he's whipping up a whole situation. I'm not recording it or nothing. Uh -huh. Then he put it in front of me, like, boom, this Blackberry, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I wanted the whole joint. He like, man, just <laughs> taste the <and> joint. <laughs> Tasted the joint, fire. Left that thing feeling right. So. Yeah, you had a good ass time. You came in here the next day, super like. Yeah, what? I was super lit. <laughs> but them French toast, though. Them French toast. <laughs> you will not be disappointed. Yeah. And I just did the salmon, the, sa the stuffed salmon joint oh, yeah, with yeah. the rice. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to gas it up, but I'm letting y'all know June 5th, you're in D it's the D.C. Come area. Definitely, <laughs> definitely come down to the Ella Grace. Hit them up on... Um, I, if you want to set a, get your table reservations in, I strongly suggest it. Uh, DM at Love Ella Grace is a, a underscore between the words. Hit them up or you can call. What's the number? Oh, man. Man, I ain't got the number. I, uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's going to be in the video. Yeah. I, I, by, yeah, the end the video. Of this, by the end of the episode, we're going, right yeah, look, look, right there. <laughs> or here. What are the places? But, yeah, we're going to definitely hit us up. You know what I'm saying? Or you can hit us up, hit myself, Tony, whatever, and we'll direct you to the right place to definitely set up that reservation. But it's going to be lit. Bring your friends and bring your friends' friends out. It's going to be a nice situation. So, Tommy. Yes, sir. How did you get into the dispensary business? How did Up and Down come into about? Uh, and well, why did you call it Up and Down? Well, a um, little backstory. Uh, so a lot of people didn't know, but uh, I was dabbling in, well, I was into sports a lot, so yeah. I couldn't really have a whole uh, regular job. So like, you know, that was kind of like my thing that I did on the side mm -hmm. um, all the way through. Then uh, the opportunity came around, uh, around 2012 when they uh, they le they legalized it in DC. So I was like, all right, let's, it's time for me to make a move. Uh, start uh, developing a um, business plan, start putting anything together. It took a long time. Um, about how because, long? Uh, it took about like six years. Wow. Yeah, because I didn't, we didn't open until, oh, I didn't ever put everything together until 2018. So. And you started on it in 2012. Yeah, I started developing everything, just kind of brainstorming, putting everything together. Uh, Wait, let me, let me ask you this before you even go. What made you say, I could be the one to do this? Because a lot of people, are scared to pull that trigger. Like they're familiar with the marijuana, yeah. you know, business and, and, and understand, you know, like the, the, the need of it. Yeah. But they scared to pull that trigger. Like, I'm actually gonna put this paperwork in. I'm actually gonna be um, one of the businesses. It was, it was, it was one of the things where I started seeing like all those West Coast guys, like Burner, okay. um, mm. the Jungle Boys, yeah. all of them. And we didn't really have nobody in the West, on the East Coast that was really doing it on that type of level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were getting, you know, products and everything from out there anyways but at the same time there wasn't really anybody out here on the east coast like really got a name out there like that mm -hmm. so it was like all right well um i was tired of kind of going doing the, the backdoor stuff and kind of doing everything on the black market i was like look i gotta go legal so mm -hmm. uh this was a, this was an opportunity for me to go mainstream and go go to the point where it was going to be more on the legal side so yeah. i was like all right well let me figure out everything that we need to figure out throughout all this time. Because 2012, when they came out, they didn't really have a clear path or as far as how to kind of do this without getting in trouble. Yeah. But then as the years went by, the 
the rules and everything started getting a little bit more lax. Uh, they got a little bit more clarity as mm-hmm. far as like where where this was going. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, let me jump on this train now. Uh, and I got a couple. I have two partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to them about it. They I showed them what what it was or what what we were gonna do. Mm-hmm. And within probably thirty minutes of showing them, they were like, so, we, yeah, let's uh, let's cut the check. Let's go. Yeah. So right. April, I mean August. 2018 was when uh, CTS uh, Up and Down was created. Uh, we didn't open until December 1st uh, of um, 2018. Open for a month. Yeah. I was still working at the bank at the time. So I was like, while I was working at the bank, I was learning all these financial things as far as like learning um, how to manage money. Um, basically a uh, financial advisor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So from that point, I was like, all right, I'm going to take these tools that I learned from all these other companies that I work. Don't get me wrong. Um, I do not knock anybody for working in um, the corporate uh, corporate lane or even on the nine to five lane because it got me to where I needed to be right here. Nice. So I stacked my money. I did what I needed to do to get to the point where I could like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Mm-hmm. And then within a month, I started seeing this, uh, the sales. I was scared at first. Is it, is it really going to do what is uh, what I expected to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then after a month, I saw the numbers. I was like, shit, I'm only doing this at 50%. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still working and doing this. I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and put in my two weeks. My girl is literally in Cali at the time, and I didn't even tell her. So, But you I, didn't tell her what? I didn't tell her I was resigning. Oh, okay. But, okay. You know, like that's a, that's a regular gig. So yeah, like, right, you know, right. like everybody's like security, security, yeah, security. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So I'm like, uh, shit, I'm gonna go ahead and dip out by January, uh, January 18th, literally a couple of days before my birthday. I was like, this is a birthday present to myself. I'm betting on myself at this point. Fact so up. All in. For, I went all in mm-hmm. and it's been a successful ride at this point. Yo, I shout out to that, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to that, man. Shout out to believing in your dreams. Was it a dream of yours or was it like, um, what? let me ask you this, your entrepreneurial side of you, mm-hmm. what part of it was a dream for you? Um, I think like I took it as a, another uh, arena because I played football, mm-hmm. uh, went to Maryland, expected to play there, got hurt, uh, never got actually stepped on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of prospects and everything was like, all right, if you do this, you do this, you can get to the league. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, once I got hurt, it was like, that was out the, out the window at that point. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, learning all of the necessary corporate businesses that I work for um, kind of taught me, like, all right, this is, I can do this on my own, but I need to, I need to get into the right, uh, go, go, I need to figure out a way. Okay. So, um, from that point, I was like, all right, well, this is going to be my arena at this point. So I was like, all right, this is a project for me that's going to allow me to actually build something that's going to be for me, not for just, you know, I'm making everybody else rich and then just working underneath somebody and just, you know, I made Verizon, Bank of America, millions of dollars. Yeah. And I right. saw only a, th- a couple thousand. Right. Fact so at that point, I was like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not for just making this money for everybody, uh, for yeah. these major companies anymore. Let mm-hmm. me make this money for myself. And like I said, bet on I bet on myself, and it, uh, and it's been a, a hell of a ride uh, ever since. How long did you go back and forth between betting on yourself or staying in the game? Uh, in the corporate game, that in the corporate is. game, playing um, safe. I went back and forth. I mean, after honestly, I honestly wasn't going to leave my job. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're going to just run this and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 why? Because you wanted to play it safe or you was like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I want to have the two incomes? I wanted to play it safe. Okay. I wanted to play it safe for for the, for the for at least six six months. That was the plan originally. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out that way. <laughs> like after like two months, you yeah, was like, man, two, I got to make a decision. Yeah. Uh, it was getting to a point where like we were, it was the, like, I looked at the numbers at after December. I was like, all right, we only, we're making this much. I think, and and I'm only at it doing this at fifty percent. If I do put a hundred percent into this, it can go wherever I wanted to go. So I was like, all right. It took literally about a month. I was I was nervous at first, mm-hmm. but 
when I when it when I did it, it kind of it was like a weight off my shoulder. Cause like working for a, a working for a company and working for a corporate company, literally you got to follow. You got to be at work at a certain time. Mm-hmm. You got to follow certain rules. We can't do certain things. Me being an entrepreneur allows me to be freestyling and everything. Yeah. And also with me being able to make be able to be in the position I'm in, I'm able to help a lot of other people too. Gotcha. But, um, my our first year, we made. I would say we made we made uh, <laughs> yeah yeah we made, yeah we made some money yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's when you know you only were like look look man look I, hey listen it worked all right let's ask another question the plan worked the plan worked the plan worked, the plan worked. worked. The plan shout worked. out to God the, yeah, uh, yeah yeah absolutely um, I want to ask you this um how difficult is it I I I'll give you a little backstory why I asked that question. Mm-hmm. So I spent some time out of um, L.A. for a while, right? And while I was out there, um, a childhood friend of mine, um, I learned, opened up one. Yeah. Now, he was in the music industry for a while, and um, he kind of broke the wave early, like when it, started, when it first got legalized. Yeah. But he, got, he had went out there early, like 2007, 2008. Mm-hmm. And he had built his relationships up and things like that. And he was already like in the finance side of the entertainment business. And then- he got his partners together and then out at LA, they was doing like, are you probably familiar? They be doing like seminars oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the whole nine to show you how to get in. Right. So he broke in the industry. Oh, and the business very, very early in the game out LA. And after seeing it and then seeing how he was able to transform his life, my male or oh, another whole boy childhood friend, which is his best friend mm-hmm. moved out there. And he, they were living their best life. I started looking into it. Mm-hmm. By the time I started looking into it, I was obviously super late to the party, right? <laughs> right. Like, the closest I could get is probably Orange County. <laughs> well, you know, like, I, like, I, I honestly uh, considered going out of Cali to kind of get more involved it's, with that. With, on what side? The mobile or the uh, the actual brick and mortar? Uh, the brick and mortar side. But I was like, at that point, I was like, mm, why why go out there when it's already it's flooded? super saturated. It was saturated like mm-hmm. crazy out there. So yeah. I was like, why not be that, be... The cookies of the East Coast, right? facto. But why right. not? Why not be the uh, Jungle Boys of the, West, uh, of the East Coast? And now, how hard was it? How hard was it to break? I'm, the reason why I actually this, right? So on Netflix, right? Uh, on YouTube, you can go watch this. Is there's a show on there or a site? It's called Netflix is a joke. Mm-hmm. The host of that is uh, Hassan Minaj mm-hmm. and Minhaj, and he had a, a joint called. He did a, a video like 11 months ago. It's called the Legal Marijuana Industry is Rigged. Is it rigged in your opinion? I honestly think it. Well, if you have the right people in, uh, involved uh, with on your team, yeah, uh, I don't think it's rigged. So, like, it is rigged to a certain extent because, like, for instance, uh, I'll speak on Maryland. Um, at first, when Maryland first opened up their uh, legal dispensaries and uh, legalized uh, marijuana in Maryland, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people applied for the, uh, the, the applications and things of that nature for the licensing. Yeah. I would say about, I think, out of the 20, one only one was a minority. Yeah. And that was the reason why they had to go back to reissue licensing mm-hmm. to more minorities. Uh-huh. So it's a great it's it's hard to break into the business uh, as far as getting into the dispensary. But the thing was in DC, they weren't offering any dispensaries licenses. So what okay. I did was I uh so there's what they call the I-71 compliant law. Okay. Um, we're we're not allowed to sell marijuana. Mm-hmm. Got gotcha, you. Unless gotcha. you're a dispensary. Got gotcha. you. So in turn, we gift it. Gift it. Yeah. So yeah. like a lot of times, a lot of people will just come in there just just to support, buy a t-shirt, a hat, uh, whatever it may. A sticker. A sticker, whatever yeah. it may. Just just to support the the business or whatever itself. Gotcha. So at that point, we just gift. So gotcha. that's how we broke into the business because we found a loophole. Okay. So everybody, a lot of like. A lot of people say, oh, well, there's more competition coming out there. I'm like, I, I welcome it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, it's just going to make the industry stronger. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, you got to do it the right way. Is it hard? Uh, because you're going that route, do you run into problems because you definitely have to source? Uh, you still have to source. But at the same time, like we try to source from here. But okay. It's, they're like, local growers? They're local growers, but the... The only issue and, with that is, is that I'm not uh, knocking the growers over here. They need to, they they need to step perfect it up. their craft. Because oh, uh, they all indoor. They all indoor. A lot, a lot of them are indoor. Some of them are. Some of them are outdoor. But at the same time, like a lot of it is come to what it, what it really breaks down to is that 
Cali is the the mecca. Yeah, yeah, mecca. So yeah, yeah. if you're gonna try to compete with them mm-hmm. or like to really be on that type of level, you really have to go out there mm-hmm. to get the get the growers or get the professionals that know what they're doing. Yeah, to come over here to either teach the people here mm-hmm. or you either partner up with somebody from out there. Like there, you see a lot of these. Uh, cultivations or uh, dispensaries partnering with burner yeah. cookies and correct, uh, correct, correct. a lot of them because they have the knowledge to be able to grow the proper weed. Because we've had complaints from clients where they've gone to dispensary, they've gone to um, the Maryland dispensaries, even the ones in D.C., and they're getting product that is not that great right. yep. or they're wasting a lot of money Correct. going to them. And they're spending, um, they spending that real money. Yeah, like because like the dispensaries, like, granted, don't get it wrong, don't get me twisted, like, uh, our prices are very competitive to the dispensaries, but at the same time, uh, the the difference is, is that the dispensaries are very their quality control. I don't know if their quality control is that great. Yeah. But like a lot of the clients that I see or they, that my 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 employees see, they complain because they got to one. You got to pay for a license to go into the dispensaries mm-hmm. every year. Mm-hmm. You got to renew it every year. So that's anywhere between a hundred to. Two hundred dollars every year mm-hmm. just to go into a store. Like why? Mm-hmm. They need it. Like to be honest with that's, you, that's that's a regulation. That's a regulation. Okay. So the federal government, honestly, to me, just needs to like make it recreational all the way all, all across the board. I'm so happy that you way said you don't that. Need the idea or anything yeah, like yeah. The ID because these are like a lot of people get it twisted where where like marijuana is a like a recreational drug. No, it's not. It is a it is medicine to some people. Mm-hmm, right. Like, don't get me wrong, there are people out there that just smoke it for recreational actual purposes. But to some people, it's kind of funny because some people smoke, but they don't even realize that they have a mental mental a mental. Yeah, it brings them down. It brings them down, down, or it just it just calms them calms their nerves. Yeah, right. and like, and it it kind of folds into the, uh, falls into that uh, that realm of uh, mental health. Yeah, how does this help in it? It's helping a lot of people because think about it. You got people that my, I got. I suffer from anxiety. I I have sleep. Um, I mean. a, uh, not not sleep apnea, oh. but I have um, uh, what is that? Um, you can't sleep. Oh, I didn't talk about like uh, I need mean, like narcolepsy. No, no, not just no. when you can't sleep. I can't sleep. It's um, insomnia. insomnia. Yeah, exactly. Insomnia. So the ghost in the room yeah, just yeah, said yeah. it. <laughs> so like Shout insomnia. Out. Wise, um, like, my 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 girl actually witnessed it. I went to a family. Uh, family member's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were we were traveling. I, honestly, I didn't want to smoke weed yeah. because you know, what I'm saying like you trying to be respectful. I'm trying to be respectful to, to them. Mm-hmm. And she actually really uh, finally saw it in like, like real yo, this life. nigga really cannot like, sleep. Yo, this motherfucker can't sleep. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, I was literally up for like to three four o'clock in the morning, and she's like, "Yo, what's wrong with you?" I'm like, "I can't sleep. Like, I need to go smoke." Was something with something on your mind, or you just so, could not get comfortable enough to sleep? Nah. So m- at night. Yeah. That's when my mind starts mind racing. racing. Yeah. So my mind is racing. It's not racing for a bad reason. It's racing for a good reason. So thinking business. I'm, think, I'm thinking yeah. about business. I'm thinking about all types of other projects that I'm trying to trying to get going. Yeah. Like I was just so happened in Jersey when this was happening. Like we were in the process of uh, going to check out uh, a couple locations yeah. because we're opening up a, a new store in um Brooklyn. Hold up. Jersey. <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> new York. What's happening? We coming. We coming. What's <laughs> happening? Tell them, Tommy, what's happening? Um, what's happening the, from uh, DC the, to Jersey slash New York? What's what's happening? So I'm a I'm a partner uh, in this store that's going to be open in uh, in New York. Uh, it's called um, To the Moon. To the We're going to basically have a. It's going to be an exotic munchies type store, okay. but with a membership twist to it. Mm. So like, if so you it's got just the, edibles, or we doing flowers too? Oh no no, we doing everything. Oh, okay, but okay. This it's a it's a exotic munchie. So like all those foreign snacks that you see that uh, that you can't get from here, mm-hmm. we're gonna have them in this particular store. Mm-hmm. And then on uh, if you sign up for a membership, boom, you have access to other things. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, okay. if you want that pass, <laughs> <laughs> you know who to talk to first. <laughs> yeah, so, but now nah, that's what's up. Yeah. So you know, when is that I, launching? Uh, we're with God willing, we're uh, we're gonna be launching by July third. Uh, 
the weekend of Fourth of July. Okay. Right so hopefully, corner. hopefully everything, uh, if everything falls into place, we we will be opening that time. Otherwise, we'll be pushing it back a little further. We will be sending Tony, our Jersey correspondent. <laughs> Shout this out. Is, this is in Brooklyn. I don't got no pass in Brooklyn. No, no, no. It's okay. You're from Jersey City. That's a pass enough. Jersey City, stand up. Uh, our Jersey City correspondent will be traveling to Brooklyn to give you all the info on what is going on. So report, please stay tuned. a lot. With the from pass. to the moon. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, I definitely, like I said again. I've been up and down. I brought a friend through there. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I like the setup. I like what you offer. I like the customer service. I like it a lot. I know a lot of people who thought about it. I also thought about it for some time when I was at the night. I was like, all right, this game ain't for me right now. Right. I don't, I'm not knowledgeable enough. I wasn't really, uh, really aware. I knew I was just jumping in just because it was a money play. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. No, so that's, if, a lot of times I, I kind of looked at it uh, where... Like, granted, I was doing this since I was, like, 13. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, Mom, Dad. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is something that I was, I've was i been doing for since I was a kid. Yeah. So, like, I got experience in this. Got it, so, got it, like, got it. The thing, uh, thing about it is, like, a lot of people that wanted to get into it, like, I've had people that I've presented a, a business plan to, mm-hmm. and they just laughed at me. So, how did you get into the restaurant business? Um, it was just an opportunity that came about. Like, you know, um, you know me. Uh, we yeah. in the club business. We in the nightlife. That's business. another reason why he can't sleep, y'all. We used to being <laughs> up all night. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, the nightlife industry kind of just was was great when I was in it uh, yeah. 100%. Fact, though. Uh, but once as I got older, I was like, look. Can't, uh, can't, can't be outside like I that. I can't be like this. Uh, Especially like, with I'm, children. Yeah, I was like, uh, I had a I had a kid when I was 28. So I was like, uh, I think it's time for me to hang this up. Yeah. Uh, I tried to give it another couple years, but then I was like, you know mm-hmm. what? I'm I'm good with this. I'm going to go back uh, do the... Do know, the right uh, thing. The square thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The square <laughs> thing. Square I got thing. you. So, but at the same time, I'm like... Uh, I still had that itch. So mm-hmm. one of my managers at my store at uh, Up and Down uh, had came to me about the opportunity. He's like, would you be interested? I was like, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, it took me literally the meeting that night and then I called my partner, Raheem, uh, best friend. We all went to Maryland, mm-hmm, everybody. Mm-hmm. So the funny thing was I called him. was like, he was asleep. Like, yo, I don't, need, I don't care what you're doing. Get your ass up. Get here and like, get here immediately. Yeah. He got dressed, got there about 20 minutes later. This is an opportunity. I told him what it was. He's like, what's what's the stipulations? Uh he's leaving. Uh yeah. He he's leaving the leaving the area and he needs to, you know, offload this basically. Off-load. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for us to take over. Um took a look at everything. Uh all the finances were were cool. Uh by that we met on Tuesday. By that Friday, we were signing paperwork. Well, Wait, so what was it before? It was Ella Grace. It's called Ella Grace oh, okay. before, yeah. Okay. So um, the gentleman that owned it before, he named it after his daughter. Okay. okay. Uh, he, was a D- he was a police officer, DEA agent, uh, who was, uh, I guess, restationed out in LA. Okay. A um, lot of things was going on with him as far as the his work, his yeah. work thing was going. So he's just like, look, I can't do this and be out there at the yeah. same time. So. I, I want to give it to uh, get it like have it, sell it to somebody that's going to take care of it and uh, build it up the way I would. So with me and Raheem being in the uh, nightlife industry for uh, you know, I, I would say forever enough. Shit, enough I would time. Say, <laughs> damn near, yeah, damn near over to, uh, over a decade. Yeah, um, it was like all right, this is going to be our opportunity to literally jump back in this and actually be an owner. Yeah, because like you know we dealt with a lot of uh, club oh. owners, club. You know, uh, managers, GMs, g- general, things of that nature, and they were, you know, they were fair. I made a lot of money. I can't even be bad. I can't say anything bad about them. I work for Abdul, yeah. Bar Bonds, Taz, uh, all the top uh, top guys in the game. I worked for at some point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned a lot from them, and I yeah. thank them for everything because at this point, I, I am who I am because uh, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pay homage to those guys all the time because at the end of the day. If I didn't learn all those things that I learned from them, I wouldn't be here. Exactly. Uh, because I do take a lot of the things that they taught me mm-hmm. into Definitely. the the restaurant, even into uh, business in general. Gotcha. So, um, like I said, the restaurant just came about. It was like, all right, well, we signed it. And then 
Joe, lo and behold, the pandemic started right when we signed the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, you got to be kidding me. So we thinking that the pandemic is just going to be maybe a month, mm -hmm. month or two. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. We, we'll, we'll get through it. It just kept stretching, kept yeah. stretching. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is going to be, uh, starting Did to Did Rod look at you crazy? Like, no, no, no. Both of us were looking at, looking at each other crazy because he was okay. like, yo, what are we going to do? It was like, uh, shit, we're going to have to start doing this carryout shit because yeah. the carryout was cool, but at the same time, people really wanted to get out and sit down. Mm -hmm. And then the city wasn't allowing nobody to really open up to do anything mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. So we didn't, we, we're on 8th Street. So we're not, we're right there. The, the trolleys is right there. Mm -hmm. So it's not something where we can put like all those restaurants. Where gotcha, you, gotcha. Uh, outdoor outdoor city. Yeah, outdoor you can't city. do nothing. They couldn't do that because the trolley is literally running right up on against it. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There's other restaurants down the street on 8th Street that had the room for it. Mm -hmm. But we're at the end of 8th Street. So yeah. like putting so, like putting cinder blocks out there to um to block out or yeah. pins out there uh, wasn't ideal for 8th Street. So, got it, got uh, we it. We couldn't do it. Uh, we would we would have loved to, but uh, it kind of just kind of made us, um, you know, retool and figure out other ways to kind of get people in. And then the city finally opened up in September, mm -hmm. uh, 25%. <laughs> I don't know how anybody could, or any restaurants could literally make any money, uh, paying staff, paying just for the brick and mortar itself, uh, off of 25% capacity. It's not. I I don't think it's realistic. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I can imagine all these other restaurants that have like the like fifty thousand uh, dollar rent or mortgages, whatever mm -hmm. maybe, uh, or twenty thousand, ten thousand, whatever maybe. Like uh, that would literally just take up everything you might have made for that month. Gotcha, if, gotcha. If that, if, yeah, yeah, even if it covers that, yeah. even if it covers that. So like, um, I'm thankful that we made it through mm -hmm. um, the pandemic. Uh, I think everybody that uh, supported us through. During the pandemic, the carryout se season, then when we uh the twenty five percent, now we at fifty. Now we yeah, we, fully open right now. Open. Uh, we are fully open now, ladies and gentlemen. June fifth, three. <laughs> the allegations. Yeah, so Gemini uh, season brunch. Y'all make sure y'all there. Make sure y'all bring an appetite because y'all gonna order everything on that menu. Yo, that's. <laughs> I don't want to gas it any more than I already have for that French toast, though. <laughs> well, let, let, let me ask you this. Before you even got into it, right, because I understand that it came to you like this is a great business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Did you have any dreams, aspirations of having a restaurant or doing anything with food? Um, Because you come from the nightlife. Yeah, I came from so the nightlife. Like so it wasn't was a lot of food. Uh, like, for instance, working for Park. Uh, they obviously had a restaurant inside. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of got got to see cut some of the, a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff. I never knew it was going to be this difficult mm -hmm. until I actually when we got into it. I was like, "Yo, this is a little bit more than what I uh, bargained for." Right. But I asked a couple people around that were in the industry that kind of mm -hmm. uh, like has been in it for a while, so it kind of helped. But yeah. I didn't really have aspirations. I wanted to open up a club at some point yeah. in time once I you know got a got 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 myself situated, but the opportunity was too, too hard to pass up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, uh, shit, I wouldn't think about a restaurant, but my, like I said, my partners in New York, uh, were going to open up a restaurant in Delaware. Mm -hmm. So I was like, shit, it can't be that hard. Right. So once we did it, I was like, they're like, yo, how the hell you got a restaurant before me? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I just can't like, but I thought like, the hard part was taking over and then trying to retain some of the people that was Already. from the old staff. Yeah. But so we the food was still the same? Or no, we everything? Changed everything. We changed everything. everything. Okay. Because so uh, we knew that we were going to have to re... Because um, I didn't think I didn't think that we was going to have to retool and kind of rehire everybody because they had a chef. Mm -hmm. They had bartenders, everything that was kind of in place. And when right. we took over, the idea was everybody was going to stay. But then the pandemic kind of lasted way too long. People had other things that they had to do, so right. which is understandable. Uh, so we ended up having to buy, I think, June. I had to start interviewing bartenders. Uh, I, uh, Chef um, Eric Jackson literally came, kind of fell in my pocket. Mm -hmm. um, one of my employees at yep. Up and Down mm -hmm. told me about him. Uh -huh. told him I told him to come in. Uh, he told me what he can do. Showed me some of the stuff that he can do. He showed me some Fire. Stuff from his uh, <laughs> uh, Instagram. I was like, "All right, cool. Let's do a tasting." So once we did the tasting, uh, I'm a nobody knows about this, but his tasting, 
uh, I guess his, one of his um, one of his sous chefs bought the wrong chicken. So with that, he kind of it was like last minute. So he's like, all right, I got to I just got to do you gotta it. Improvise, I yeah. got to improvise. So with that alone, I was like, all right, so he can improvise or he can kind of move on on like on the fly. Right. So that was that was a key. That was one number one thing that kind I looked at. Then I had a bunch of my close friends, me and Raheem's close friends come in to kind of do the tasting. They was like, yo, when they had his food, it was they were like the it was official. Yeah. Listen, y'all, I wasn't gassing. <laughs> y'all see what I'm talking about. Oh, it was so, that live. So like during the so mind you, we only started doing the, the uh carryouts for like the first couple months mm-hmm. when we opened back up. So just so happened, Diggs, we weren't, the bar wasn't open. Yeah. So we didn't have no bartender or anything. We weren't doing any drinks or anything. Uh, and then Diggs came in to pick up a, do a order. Mm-hmm. Just so happened, he's like, yo, aren't you the owner up and down? Yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, oh shit, I'm a member. Next mm-hmm. thing you know, we talking. He's like, yo, I'm actually bartending too. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Jump behind the bar and let me see what you can do. Yeah. Kind of did it, like off the fly. He's like, went back there, did up some drinks. Me and Raheem was sitting there like, where he came in to pick up his food. Came yeah. up there, just ordered some food, and then <laughs> sat down. He like he was waiting for his food. He uh, saw me with the up and down hat. He's like, "Oh, um, you look familiar." I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm actually the owner of up and down." And he's like, "Oh, I, th- I kind of yeah, I, th- I could have yeah, yeah. thought that was you." Uh, then next thing you know, it's like we got talking. Uh, he said it, he bartended. I was like, "Oh really? Uh, what, are you a bartender or are you a mixologist?" He's like, "Man, I make anything." I told y'all Yo. he could do it and not even know what he's doing, but he just does it. Like, it's just yeah. that hot. Like, yeah, so like, that, that was that was the thing. So I was like, all right, cool. Well, jump back there. Let's let's see what you're going, uh, what you can do. He had, we had a couple bottles and he just started putting some stuff together. I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. Like, I don't even know what that is, but that tastes good as hell. Uh-huh. Like, told like you don't taste no alcohol, <laughs> but then like you have one or two, you go. Done. Super lit. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, shout out Ronnie Cake. She was with me the last time I was there. She was like, "Yeah, this is it. I'm ready for brunch." But, but, but imagine my man having to explain to his girl because he came home with the cold stuff, saying, "Like, but baby, guess what though? I got a job." I got a job. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how that, it was cool because, like, that's how I kind of, kind of brought people on. Uh, yeah. And the thing is, like, these guys are not necessarily rough around a rough. But they they're trying to learn the business and learn the entrepreneurial side. And my thing is like me being in the position I'm in right now, uh, I want to give back by showing y'all how to do this. Yeah, yeah. putting people in position, yeah. Put, to get in this type of position. Got you. Um to me, the biggest flex for me, I don't care about making all this money. I don't care about doing all this other uh uh opening up all these businesses. I care about what I'm doing to help the younger guys that are coming up. Got you. For me. Like um my my cook, he wants to open a restaurant sooner or later. I was like, all right, well, you got to learn all the stuff that I'm doing right now so you can understand that. Yeah, both and sides. then, uh, yeah, I mean, at the, the biggest flex, again, to me is instead of making like all, like it's great making all this money and it's great, but the flex for me is how many other millionaires I can make. Yeah. Uh, that, that came up underneath me. Yeah. Uh, I can care less about all the money. It's great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> nah, fact the, though. Got the nice cars, got the, uh, you know, nice place, uh, yeah. things of that nature. But at the same time, like, uh, giving back to the, even with like, um, I'm going to start a nonprofit eventually yeah. within the next few, uh, months. Uh, that's after the New York project is, mm-hmm. uh, set to go. But, um, as far as that is just primarily for the, uh, inner city youth sports. Okay. Yo, I seen some of these kids that play these sports and the, uh, like play football in the in the city, and their equipment is jacked. Yeah. Like I came up playing ball and who did you play for? I played for Blainsburg. Okay, I played so, for Langley Park. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I played. Uh, <laughs> we said we used to we used to crush Bladensburg. <laughs> we used to show them a little bit. So yeah, for George all, D running yes. back. They know you out. Wide there. out. They know me out there. <laughs> Shout out all my LP people. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm so sorry. like um, coming up in uh, coming in sports and everything, I'm like, yo, it's these kids are like. I was fortunate enough to have parents that could afford to get me shoulder pads. Uh, back then, helmets weren't really a big shit. Thing. Cleats. Cleats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, 
getting like the dopest cleats possible, the best ones that nah, bro. Ones. I know what you're feeling. A like I was that kid going to Ross to get their cleats. Yeah, I was that kid. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I wasn't even going to Ross. I was going to pick and pay McGregor. <laughs> Shout out everybody who got McGregor's. <laughs> <laughs> so he laughing because he know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, but at the same time, I'm like, look, I'm. I'm in a position at this point in time to kind of give back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to, I sponsor the uh, the youth kids getting them uniforms. Uh, my son actually plays on the team that uh, that I sponsor at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm with the kid, uh, like, granted, he had the uh, new helmet, mm-hmm. new shoulder pads, things of that nature. Right, the, right. Kids on the, the kids on the other team, uh, the, on his team, is literally wearing either equipment that, was passed down mm-hmm. or equipment that's either falling apart or things of that nature. I just want to be able to do something that's going to be able to get these kids in the safest equipment possible so they can play at their best ability. You know what? I'm gone this way, but I, what's up with, is it the fact that are these teams independently constructed? Are these like boys and girls club teams? Or are these? Uh, some of them, are, I honestly, some of them are boys and girls clubs uh, programs and some of them are organ- But they just lack. They don't funding. have the funding, so like uh, we like the the organization I'm with uh, with my with my son's team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing a lot to try to basically um, cover up for a lot of the stuff that the kid the kids' parents can't cover. For. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So like for instance, we go to Florida every de- December. Um, a lot of these kids, some of them can't afford, or their parents can't afford to go. Gotcha. So it's and it's and it's like in our best interest to do fundraisers, do things of that nature to help them out to mm-hmm. either have the funds to be able to take these teams, take these kids out of there. Because a lot of these kids, some of them are from like uh, Savannah Terrace, mm-hmm. uh, Southeast, just in the city in general, yeah. they don't have the resources to be able to do things like uh, go out of the state. I know some of these kids are being able to go out of state and go to Florida to go uh, play in these tournaments. It's like, means the world to them because it's mm-hmm. actually getting them out of the, out of the city and uh, allowing them to see other things outside of just the violence that we see in the city. I like right. where you're going. Let's pivot real quick and yeah. go on another side of this. We both, all of us have played sports as kids and probably in these uh, boys club, girls club leagues or recreation leagues. Let's start by saying, what, being an adult now, what was the benefit, the pro of you joining and being able to play in these leagues? Uh... Honestly, to get the camaraderie mm-hmm. uh, with all the other kids that's in your age range or just in the same sport in general. Because, mm-hmm. like, uh, a lot of times, yeah, it's one thing to have friends at school, but, like, yeah, having those kids from around areas, the city, mm-hmm. around the city, it broadens your, uh, like, your your visibility as far as, like, what you see around the city. Yeah. What you see, your, like, for instance, if you just have kids that are just going to school in Northeast or, like, just in, like, that Trinidad area. Mm-hmm. That's all the kids they see. Okay? Yeah. To be honest with you, like when you go to those bigger schools, when you're going to high school and mm-hmm. things like that, you're probably going to schools where you're seeing kids from like Southeast, South, uh, Southwest, Northwest, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't even, like my son finally moving to, to live with me. I'm now seeing as a parent, like where, how this lottery system works for some mm-hmm. of these kids. So like my son goes to Global, um, or Washington Global, mm-hmm. but we had to go in the lottery to do that. Yeah, because like this neighborhood school was cool, but like I was like, I'm not. I want him to go to a school that's gonna actually teach him and keep him yeah. motivated and things like that. So, Washington Global was probably the best for him at this yeah. point. Uh, that was gonna teach him uh, and broaden his uh, his ability. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that the school, his neighborhood school, was gonna do the same thing, but like uh, the resources are there. The resources. Now, listen, I'm, 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 I. For me. Like I shout, I shout out Coach Gene. You know what I'm saying? Anybody know Coach Gene? Growing up, he did uh, semi pro leagues and everything else. There's a bunch of people who might have come across him in this DMV area. But the thing about it is, right? I'm, and I'm, I'm bringing this up for a particular reason because we stress academics, but we fail to understand the importance of athletics, whether it be soccer, baseball, basketball, football, whatever it may be, tennis, badminton. I don't care what it is. Right. There is a social component and also a personal component. I think it comes with, you know, putting your child in sports mm-hmm. where they have to, where they, like, when I think about it, like I'm having these concerts with my son now with basketball, right? I start thinking about the work ethic that we started to learn just playing sports. Yeah. Like we used to play in a cold. 
It could yeah. be raining. If it wasn't pouring, we'd be like, dog, 33, what's up? You know what I'm saying? If you could run. What? We was yeah. outside. We was outside. You know what I'm saying? Bleeding. Exactly. Like bleeding. bleeding. Like, I got plenty of scars from it. Absolutely. Like, like, if, you, like if you ain't got your, uh, your, your, your wounds from being in the street, uh, like playing sports, like shit. I was playing on concrete. Yeah, we were playing, yeah, football to concrete. Everybody, everybody nailing crates on trees. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like there's a benefit to that that, that, that enhances kids. And I'm kind of saying it from a perspective like, you know, it ain't about if you got thousands to go or hundreds of to go or tens of thousands to go. I think that one of the things we got to do is figure out how to get these kids active. I think COVID, we've seen a bunch of kids sit in the house and not, like, yeah. it's so funny. My, I talked to my man the other day. I'm not even going to say it because I was, it's so funny. He's like, yo, man, I don't know what's up with these kids these days. He's like, you know, my son told me <laughs> it's too many bugs outside. I'm gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, he said, this kid took his ass in the house and said, I'm not coming out till the bugs go. Yo. Hey, just play this video game. I'm like, bugs? It's the cicadas. The cicadas <laughs> is messing them up. Uh, but I still. Seen, I haven't, I haven't seen like, for the first time, I'm like, damn. Yo. I, like, the last time I seen him was when I was a youngin'. And I was like, yeah, yo. he was out there, but still playing. Okay. Yo, I was dying. Some of these he said, kids "Be complaining about sweating." What? Yes, I don't like I sweating. Getting... What? <laughs> yo, I used to be outside sweating the two. You see the white salt on my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I don't know, but we got to get these kids active. You know what I'm saying? But the thing about sports, it teaches you discipline. Yes, it teaches you work ethic. Absolutely. It teaches you your ability. That's your first. Foray into collaboration, but yeah. more importantly, just building bonds. You know, what right. I mean? like like you don't even necessarily have to be the most athletic person, but just being around it. Right. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm. Like just being the person, like like you're saying, playing um street ball, or whatever. Yeah. It also the kids are sitting on a car watching. Right. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like we become like a community. Right. You know what I mean? Or going to the the, the girls and boys club. Yeah, like for us. Our boys and girls club was downtown Jersey City, so it was like a hike for us. Yeah, right. but we got to meet. All these other people from all from, over the from city, all over yeah. the city. Right. You know what I mean? So that will help you later on in life. You might be in a bad neighborhood, but you see that one person, they'd be like, Tony, oh, okay, yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, yeah. Yo, you absolutely right. Because when playing sports as a kid, we played, we had teams, whether it be Bladensburg, Kettering. I mean, we can go all around right. the area. So, like, when you got older, you still remember some of the kids that you played against at different points in time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And whether y'all went to the same school, college, or whatever in life, you like, yo, I remember that was so-and-so who played for so-and-so. Yeah. No different if you play for a high school team and you play against the other high schools in the area. Yeah. You be like, oh, that's so-and-so from Northwestern, or that's so-and-so from Bladensburg High, that's Start so-and-so from Parkdale. Yeah. It yeah. starts your networking early. You start to learn how to build relationships. But I think at the other time, other part of it is, like, it teaches you good social and real life skills that yep. we undervalue. And I think that sometimes we get into what sport we prefer over the next and we fail to remember that, you know, there's a there's a great intrinsic value in what sports is at its core. You know what I'm saying? Like, to work as a team is a very important thing. There's a lot of selfish people in the world right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Maybe they were quarterbacks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but... Assuming they weren't quarterbacks, right? <laughs> the reality of it is, is that when you when you know you need, if you're a running back, you need your offensive line. Yeah, you course. need that tight end. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's a different story. If you're a wide out, you need to get open. Sometimes it's maybe your other wide out of that tight end who's springing you open. If you're playing basketball, it's that center who's sending you a pick that's getting you open for that shot. Like You start realizing you to get what you want, you got to help other people no matter what arena you in. Outside of playing individualized sports like tennis and so on and so forth. So I'm happy that you're doing that. And I, I like the idea of the nonprofit. And when you start doing that, definitely let us know oh, yeah, how we can contribute to that. Because Absolutely. growing up, I used to play, you know, did you play against the Blitz? Mm-hmm. All right. So there was a team in D.C. called the Blitz. And Blitz was like the best team in D.C. Like they took kids from every quadrant of dc northeast southeast southwest and they just put them all together on the, on the team it was the kids they were willing to be on those teams right, 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 right. they still got those type of teams out yeah they still got that they okay like the maryland heat they got, okay uh um the dmv knights mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. a lot of my a lot of my guys lanham um, yeah whoever lanham is <laughs> they doing the same thing i don't like y'all lanham <laughs> these they got the they got all the money they got the best field 
Right. You know what I'm saying? And they feel like they're going to everybody neighborhood and just, just taking the between. best kids. Yeah, they're doing So, like, <laughs> like, those are kids that are be, uh, either being developed by, like, coaches like my uh, my head coach uh, yeah. with uh, my son's team. He's, he's bringing up all these kids from, like, they sucked at one point, and then now they're actually straight, Fact straight dogs. Mm. But at the same time, like these guys that like have these major programs where they have kids, like, uh, and parents aren't aren't uh, aren't uh, are to blame for this too, because a lot of times what it is is if their kid's not playing, they'll go put them on another team. Mm-hmm. What you gonna go put them on another team that's gonna be that already has a stacked team mm-hmm. for what? You gonna have him sit on the bench? Yeah, right. he can actually be over here playing for another team that's actually gonna get him some clock and get him some. Uh, some reps. Yeah. Um, it's just like I said. It's it's the parents that kind of push the kids. And like I I seen kids where I ain't want to go over there, but my parent, my mom made me. Absolutely. So like it's like, damn. Uh, does a kid have any say so on where he wants to play or where Facts. he? Because he might have developed a bond with these group of kids. Yeah. You send them out to to uh, 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 to these group of kids. That's a bunch of dogs that just look at them like. You ain't nothing. Whatever. Yeah. So like then it's 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 messing up their uh, their mental at the yeah at that point. and their and confidence. confidence yeah because like you got to build these kids confidence up to a point where they they know how to perform on the field correct but you got kids that are like that's just the the bullying that you're gonna get from these kids that are already playing oh you ain't taking my position mm-hmm. then you, you you trash or you you hear these little things some kids it might not trigger it too much. But there are certain kids that if they go into a situation that they're getting bullied mm-hmm. or they're not like, oh, you're not that good, blah, blah, blah. They're going to eat into that and then they're not going to be nothing. And then they fall into doing some other, uh, other facts. Things. So on that note, I just really want to shout out all the parents that are actually um, supporting their children in their athletic endeavors. And um, forcing them outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get them out. Get them involved and, in some things outside these bubbles. Absolutely. And coaches. It's a very selfless and somewhat thankless job, but I do want to shout out all the coaches out there. And the reason why I'm shouting them out is they, they don't get paid. They don't get paid. But at the same I time, love. I started thinking about my coaches growing up and what it meant to be a coach. And it made me decide why I wouldn't be a coach. Right? Because I had coaches that was always there. They never were never not there. <laughs> on season, off season, never not there. They were always present. I had a coach on our team. Most of the kids in that neighborhood, you know, we were impoverished. And I remember before the games, granted, I don't eat McDonald's today. But at the end of the day, <laughs> before games, they would pay for a team, a football team of like 20, 30 kids mm-hmm. to go to McDonald's and have breakfast an hour or two before their game. Mm-hmm. Like, think about what that is. And you're talking about, what, 10, 15 weeks? Yeah. yeah. 10, 15 weeks, they would do that every sun, every Saturday morning, never asking the parents, never asking the Boys and the Girls Club to do anything. That was out of their own pockets. Right. Right? Mind you, all the adults, they would use their cars, station wagons, trucks. Y'all could hop in this car so I could take y'all to the game. And bring y'all back safely. Like, what that means now. Like, as a parent today, we ain't letting our kids go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but think about what that means. Like, a, an entire adult is taking contr- uh, taking responsibility for a group of 30. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And making sure those kids, they return the way they left. Making sure that they're, they're, they're uh, they've ate. You know what I'm saying? And that they're good when they get back. Um, it's a very thankless job. And I don't know if you know any coaches out there, but anybody who's out there, like, support the coaches out there. You know, however you can support them, support them. I don't know care if it's morally, financially, or the combination of the two. Because there's a lot of kids that I've benefited from, and I'm one of them today that can say that I've benefited from coaches Absolutely. that when my parents couldn't pay that $110, this is a long time ago, y'all, but either way, $110 membership fee, so that I can get the equipment in place was, for the that year. That was a registration fee. Right. That was just a registration yeah, yeah, yeah. fee. <laughs> they was like, you good. You straight. You don't got to worry about that. You just show up to practice tomorrow. Right. Yeah. When a kid needed to lose weight to get to make weight, you know what I'm saying? Everybody who's playing 110, y'all know what I'm talking about, or 120. <laughs> you see, know what I'm saying? I, see, I didn't have the luxury of doing that because I was too big for when I was a... Uh, you were like, too big? I was too big. So, like, I was, I was overweight for the, uh, like... I played with the bigger kids, so like. Oh, you went up and, one. Yeah, so like one twenty five was the highest, and then there was a un, like what you have to be. 
you could be over 125, yeah. but like you had to be only like a 132. Or yeah. yeah. Bro, I was at 160 at like 13. Bro. Get like, out of here. Like, oh, man. <laughs> so Word. I was playing with the big kids. That's why I, I, I think the, the fact that I was a big ass kid. Yeah. And, and, now, like, I got a chance to play against bigger, uh, uh, better competition. Yeah, 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 kids, yeah. Older kids. And then when I play, when I got to high school, it was like, bro, he's a dog. Like, let's yeah. get, just get him You're on the field. So, so, so as we talk about sports, there's two things as we wrap up. <laughs> so, if y'all not aware right now, Kwame Brown, former NBA player, former NBA center, former number one pick at the Washington, was it Washington Wizards? Yeah, Washington Wizards. Um, has been viral than ever. <laughs> Shit, man, um, because <laughs> he's been quiet. The sleeping giant has risen. He's 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 been awakened by the fact that others have um have been dogging him for years. They've been calling him a bust. They've been calling him all kinds of things. But he did play twelve years in the league, and he's literally come for people's necks. One of the individuals he's definitely come for is Charlemagne the God, Ooh. and he's brought up um a rape story that. He um, was involved with some way, somehow. Won't get into that because that's too sensitive of a topic. But what I did want to talk about, because we are talking about sports, how do you, it all started on the heels of two former NBA players talking about him. Now, anybody who plays sports know that people talk shit all day. You got to be able to talk trash. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So my question is, were they just talking trash or... And he should be like, cool, or is this really like, all right, he y'all talk y'all trash, he talking his trash, what's up? I think I think I think with uh Kwame Brown is like it's touching a nerve with him because he's been hearing this for years. Yeah. And then from on top of that, uh the fact that these celebrities that have these platforms that are really putting him on blast even more, and now he's he's not he's taking it extremely personal, but mm -hmm. at the same time. He needs to keep it within the game. He's keeping it. He he's taking it way beyond that because he's like, he, he's, oh, he's going to their personal life. He's and going shit. into their personal life, talking about things that, whatever it may have been uh, with uh, Charlemagne with that particular situation. Yeah. I don't know nothing about it, so I'm not going to speak on it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he, that's something that's maybe a subject that uh, like a sensitive subject for Charlemagne. Yeah. But at the same turn, it kind of. You were going off on this man, and then on top of that, you were mentioning things about his family that he. Oh, he didn't know. even know that. When I heard that, I was like, "Whoa!" Right, yeah. Imagine you find out what happened to your father and your brother. The funny thing is, he said that the brother you're talking about, he's at work right now. Wow! So you're like, "What are you talking about? Like, you don't even know what you're talking about." Speak mm. the, if you're gonna speak facts, speak facts. Don't mm. make up shit. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's crazy. What you thinking? I'm, Trash talking or is this? I mean, I kind of understand when it comes to um, like Matt Barnes and them talking about him, mm -hmm. of him being um, as upset as, as he is, is because it's like he he felt like they're part of his peer group. So you know how sensitive this shit can get. Right. So don't dog me the way that you dogging me just for views. Like I understand that you you know you got a job to do, but like. A lot of the shit that you're saying, yeah, I'm gonna take it more personal because it's coming from you. Yeah, you know? right. And especially right. like, like, like Gilbert, because you know, what I mean, like they were they were teammates playing on the um, same team. Yeah, Jack, yeah. Like, him and Jack was on the same team too. Yeah, so like, yeah. like, like maybe like Gil didn't go too crazy on him, but at the same time, it's like he he probably wanted him to stick up for him. Mm -hmm. Right so now, he feeling exactly. like the whole fucking NBA is against him. Right, and y'all know me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when 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 y'all walk off of that set. And you see me out in public, it's supposed to be all love. Nah. nah, I'm tight. I'm super tight. I ain't mad at him. Listen, you the gloves are off. You yeah. say something about me, you just gotta take what come with this smoke. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You say you want right. all the smoke? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, you yeah. get all the smoke. You want all the smoke, I'm giving you all the smoke. Right. Plus, when you talking shit, you talking shit. You gotta find something that's gonna sting and you gonna you gotta go for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like but Becky with the good hair was funny though. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> That shit was hilarious. <laughs> I don't think I've ever would have thought to call a man back in with the good hair. That's crazy. <laughs> he got that off. <laughs> he definitely got that off. And the funny thing is, because nobody really ever heard him speak, it's kind of like you just sit there like in awe, like, yo. I thought he was mute this whole time. 
Yo. Real shit. Like, no disrespect for you, bro. Like, but at the same time, nah, I thought he was mute. I never heard him talk before. But I give him, I think I have more respect for him now because I understand now how hard, how difficult is it to be silent when you have all the reason to speak? Yeah. yeah. Like, that is a level of discipline beyond discipline. Or maybe that's even why. Or he, maturity. He's, 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 he's even more mad at them because they didn't already know how quiet he is. He don't talk shit. Like, yeah. he's not vocal like that. For y'all mm-hmm. to talk about me like this? Yeah. Right. It probably, like, really would take them off. Man, so look. So he's been rehearsing for this day. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the he mirror, like, mind, when, when, <laughs> I'm, like I'm, a, I'm a Friday's dude. Yeah. They come at me again. Yeah, so I, listen, everybody who ain't no quiet, we can talk. Y'all better shut up. This nigga <laughs> talking. He just gonna start shooting, man. Like, but I, I feel him on that one or whatever. But um, he should start his own thing. I think he is. I think we want that mama's cooking, seasoning, whatever he got, that branding. I oh, think really? I want it. I want a shirt. See? <laughs> See? I want a shirt. I heard I heard his followers went up like crazy. Of course. Yeah. He's giving personality. Yeah. Bro, I've I've so I've just been watching the field, jumping in the videos. You've been watching all of it? I've been, been watching them. <laughs> 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 See? Yeah, I would have watched him too. Like I like what he's so doing. So he really woke up a sleeping giant. Definitely woke up a sleeping giant. Now they gotta deal with him. All right, so as we wrap, right, here's the question. So on Pin Tap In Live, uh, the last one we did, uh, the topic was, is it acceptable for your associate, friend, or acquaintance to date your ex? Mm-hmm. So since Tommy, Tom wasn't on the live, <laughs> it's only right that we bring this topic back to life. But before we do that, we want to shout out everybody who joined the live and everyone who had a, uh, uh, some feedback for that. So, Tom, um <laughs> Is it okay? It's hard coming from the nightclub. <laughs> like, but yeah, you know, is I, it okay? It is it ever okay? All right, let's start. Let's break them all down. Let's start with the last, the first one. Is it ever okay for a friend to date your ex? Your ex? Okay, you got to be clear with the ex part. Is that a ex? <laughs> Any, uh, Yo, anybody who's been outside got to be like, what are we talking about when we say ex? All right, you. How do you define ex? Ex is somebody I actually had a relationship with. Like actually like, like long term. Long term relationship. Okay. Like I don't count a somebody I was fucking with for a month okay. or two. That don't that that don't that don't like some people might look at that as a relationship. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like yeah. I'm not gonna say like, oh yeah, well, I dated uh this person for two months and that's that was my girl. That's off limits to you, you and you. Like, <laughs> nah, I mean, like that's not but if it's my ex, like I bet I had a like intimate relationship with yo that's off limits bro. off like, limits, off limits. <laughs> all right associate how how, 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 how do you define associate uh someone i like know that i speak i'm cordial to yeah uh, uh when i'm out but like i'm not talking to you on a on a on regular a regular basis, basis okay uh that's what i would call an associate right, is I, it ever I, okay for them i don't care acquaintance Acquaintance, it's probably a little bit. That's even more further out. That's, that's a little just further out. Yet. I wouldn't even care. You wouldn't care because yeah, I, I, you don't know, you don't know enough. Now, the only thing would be is like if you know that I used to de- date them nine times out of ten. If you bro code, I even if we was uh, acquaintances, like me, me personally, if I, I, I'm not acquaintance, but like I said, if I, if I knew somebody was dating you and from the past, for the past. It depends on the, the nah, nigga. Uh, nah, bro, like, I, nah. wouldn't, I wouldn't even nah. think about it. I'm jealous. Listen, I wouldn't think about it. Nobody. I wouldn't think about dating you. Like now, oh, you wouldn't, wouldn't think about I, it. I wouldn't think about well, it. My bad. My bad. Like, uh, my homeboy. You see that. why I would, yeah. I'm, I'm not the one? Cause <laughs> I didn't even let him get it out, and I was already like, no, <laughs> nah, <I'm>, no, <laughs> no, no. No, no. I wouldn't. I'd like I said, if it's if it's, like if once you, you know you, yeah. Like even if you were my like even if I was your associate, uh, what was the other one? Uh, associate friend or acquaintance acquaintance, acquaintance. Uh, associate or acquaintance I would even if I know you and you used to date well, whoever would I, you ever no nah, okay wouldn't. it's about it's, it's different than like the entertainment yeah industry. them them cats be dating what the same people over, oh, over yeah. again that's crazy what yeah. they be going for everybody you know what I'm saying but uh listen I, we brought that up it, 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 the conversation was oh, I, I, really I, I really I interesting yeah, we yeah. did it on IG Live. Yeah. We did it on IG crazy. Live. It was actually crazy. And it was some people that was like, I mean. Why are you possessive? Yeah. Like, pos- Women. what? Women. Women. Yeah. Bro, it's like the, the the ratio to men to women is crazy. So like, like for, for every city, 
I don't know what it is here, but I think it's like I'm out, I'm off the market, so it don't even matter to me. But like for for my guys that are single, the ratio to it's men to women so is probably like ten to one here. Damn. So at the end of the day, I don't like especially I don't I don't even want to live in Georgia. Oh my god, that shit down there is like twenty five to one. Listen, I went to Atlanta last Friday or the Friday before. I was only going for a night. Listen, I'm in the freaking. Listen. He got back by like five. <laughs> That's easy. Uh, look, look, yo, look, 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 yo, I'm in the airport and I'm seeing so many body con and fucking uh, 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 body suits. I'm like, yo, who's surviving this shit? They coming yeah, I ready. I don't know where they're coming from, but they are coming ready. Right. When I in, in Atlanta, I, I learned something that day that Atlanta is one of the busiest airports. Yeah. Yo, Hartsfield, Air, yo, the people that were coming in, I wanted to pull my phone out and just put it on camera like, yo, everybody got their body out ready for the <laughs> night. They are ready. I don't know how long they're here for, the but night. they are ready. <laughs> Bro, I live down there, I live down in Atlanta, uh, 2007 to 2009, like mid-2009. Bro, the the ratio down there when I was living down there was twenty to one. See? Like it was, be, I, and I never understood why. But somebody from Atlanta actually explained it to me. What they they're say? Like, they're like, look, there's a lot of the reason why the ratio is so high is because they got a lot of down low brothers down there. Then they got the gay community, but mm-hmm. there's some that are still on the fence, but mm-hmm. they still play both sides. Okay. So at the same time, they're like, all right, well. The women are more aggressive down there because of the fact that they got to get theirs. Like, mm-hmm. all right, they see a single dude and he's straight, they going at him. Mm. Like, you ain't got to wait. I, like, I, I had to tell, I told a couple of my friends, we went to the club. I was out with my boys. Mind you, I'm engaged down there, but at the same time, I'm like, I get in the club, I get a drink bought for me. I'm ordering a drink and the bartender's giving me a drink. I'm like, what's this? Like, Shorty down there just got you a drink. That's spooky. I was like, what? Nah, that's definitely happened. I was like, this happens? <laughs> now, yeah. I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm life industry, so like, I'm, I'm not used to a woman drop by me It definitely drink. happens. So I'm like, all right. The, so, you know, th- there nah, you go, right there. Nah, it definitely happens. I actually experienced something like that, but it was so funny. I felt like a cold bitch. I can't even lie to you. <laughs> I did too. Because after she did it, she was like, I mean, so what's up? I was like, yo... <laughs> The way she said it though, it was like halfway like, sexy, but it was at the same time I was like, I don't even know how to respond to you. I was like, what? What do you want? Like, I don't but, but, but what did the what's up mean? Like, we fucking or not? Or like, I mean, like, what's up? Like, we, I mean, like, what's yeah. up with you? Like, it was like, what's up? Like, that's exactly how she said it. She was like, I mean, what's up with you? I was like, uh, that's crazy. I'm not used to this. Okay? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Definitely, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man is a different, a different. Beast. It's a different monster. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I had to. But like, I know how to handle that situation, right? So I was the, a cold bitch. With the odds in our favor, I really don't understand why you wouldn't want to go grab something brand new. Yeah, I don't want to I introduce know something my man, new. Like, uh, even I don't even like me a, as a associate, uh, whatever. All three of those categories. Yeah. Why would I want to date somebody that you either touch? Some people you, like it easy, man. Um, Some people don't want to work. Nah. Some people don't want to find nothing. They want it to just fall in their lap. They feel like, all right, how can I take the easy way out? You know what I'm saying? And the easy way out oftentimes is if I already know you or come by way of you, I don't have to get to know you. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I could be like, yo, aren't you so-and-so, buddy? Yeah. And now you're in the safe zone because you know somebody that's trusted. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. It's, it's like real talk. Yep. Like I'm trying yeah, to get true. into your inner circle or I'm trying to I'm trying to penetrate. Like I look at it like... Your friendship, like I think I said oh. on the live, like your friendship, <laughs> That's good, Paul. your friend is like, uh, what, um, uh, what, two, three levels. You got two, three levels, like one, two, three. If you would look yeah. at circles, right? Yeah. The third one is like probably like a good friend, but like a distant friend. Then you got a more of a close friend and you got your inner circle, probably your family and friends. So let's say three rings. And then your associate is probably around the fourth through six. And I think most people go up to 10. So you would say your acquaintance would be the 8 through 10. But they are people that you know by way of the people that are your associates or the friend, right? right. The, the, the outer friends, right? right? So if you think about it from that standpoint, if I'm on the 10 or if I'm on the 8th or the ninth rung and I see somebody was like, oh, they're probably the 3rd or 4th. 
I know if they operate the way you operate, you probably like, I don't know you, Slim. Right? Mm. Hey! We can let this interruption hey, happen. Come in, come in here. Come in here. You better come in here. <laughs> she like, oh my God. What's up, baby? Go. I got to get out the way. Hey. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Y'all in the middle? We in the middle. We in the middle. <laughs> we about to we gotta have this. It's family, baby. But yeah, like that person comes and they go and deal with someone on the inner rung, right? So when they deal with someone on the inner rung, they they, they got to have an entryway. How, what's your entryway? Yo, don't you know? Yo, you look familiar. Don't you know? And you're going to be like, yeah, they gonna, and if they fuck with that person, I'm like, yo, oh, they got to be the fam. Right. Next thing you know, he like, but what's up though? <laughs> but what's up? <laughs> so it really that's more how about you than it is about the girl. Fact though. Yeah. <laughs> they gotta use you. They gotta use you. They gotta use you. So many dudes dry snitch. It's it's a whole nother ball game. We won't get into it. <laughs> but <laughs> craziness. Let me ask you this from the football team. This is like I'm, I'm really my last question. You play football. Yeah. How many of them dudes was dry snitching? How many of them dudes was like, yo, like they were just dirty macking, as Tony would say. Um like in sports. Let's just say in, in sports, sports in general. I mean, I would say l- I mean, it all depends on your your, your, your relationship. Promotion with your life, we know. Nightlife, we know. Dirty macking is probably at all-time all high. high. All-time high. <laughs> it don't even matter. Like, it's an nothing, all-time nothing high. Nothing is safe. <laughs> nothing is safe. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nah, I mean, I think in the light uh, what, with the with the sports and everything, like, uh, you kind of, it depends on the person because, uh, like, me, I kind of try to stay out of the, the loop of the, the, the known. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, the, the known... Too many people are like trying to chase them. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So like at the end of the day, like you, if you got twenty motherfuckers literally on your back, like all right, well, what makes me different from them? Gotcha. I really gotta. I, it's not like I don't want to work hard, but at the same time, it's like beyond. You gotta step way, way, way beyond what uh, what your normal means would be mm-hmm. to to impress that person. Got you. So like you got twenty people, like you gotta. Oh, am I doing something better than that person or that person or that person? Mm-hmm. It, it, you never know. So you don't know where you stand on certain points, but like with uh, with the sports thing, I think I would say like at least one, like the a couple of the the quarterbacks, <laughs> quarterbacks, <laughs> quarterbacks, 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 damn quarterbacks, <laughs> damn quarterbacks. <laughs> hey, listen, selfish, <laughs> selfish. <laughs> but listen, on that note, law, y'all, we just really want to thank y'all for listening. To episode one sixty seven of the Putting Air Podcast. Your boy George D got my man Tone Sess. Age, age, y'all seen her pop in? You want to pop in again? No. <laughs> um, again, ladies and gentlemen, June 5th at the Ella Grace. The mm-hmm. proprietor is right here. You already heard it first. Everything that I was gassing, he already super gassed that thing. <laughs> so y'all already know the food is going to be amazing. The drinks going to be amazing. Shout out Chef Eric Jackson. Shout out Steve Roland Diggs. Y'all can catch him online um, on Instagram at Steve Roland Diggs. He's always online. Always online. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? Or in the casino. He told me he'd be in the casino yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but he be winning hard. He be winning? Like, I went in there with, like, with him uh, last, fr- last Saturday or last Friday. Yo, I actually came out winning like 400. I was like, I'm cool. I'm good. <laughs> Steve Roland. Hey, you see that? Um, family atmosphere in that building, nevertheless. And like I said, again, it's the Gemini Season Vibes Brunch. Mm-hmm. It's a special edition of the Cocktails and Dreams uh, Brunch and Dinner Party. Definitely come out. Putting in a podcast. Going to be hosting it. I will be there. Tone Sessa will be there. Asia Asia will be there. It's going to be a beautiful thing. So bring out your ladies. Bring out your guys. Fellas, ladies, couples, whatever. Come out. Enjoy brunch. Um, again, DM at... Love Ella Grace this is a uh, underscore between each word and reserve your tables today. Yo, Tom, how can they follow you? Uh, Tommy Lee DC, uh, pretty much on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I'm usually posting live mm-hmm. all the time, okay, uh, or posting things on the, uh, like letting you guys know what's going on or what's going on at the restaurant or going on at the shop, okay. Uh, like I said, New York, we coming soon. Okay, That's and true. then up and down, still on there, uh, IG. Yeah, up and down, uh, up and down, DC. Okay, uh, that's the uh, up and down page, and that's it. All right, so you got at Tommy Lee DC. You got at up in the letter in down DC right. for the uh, the dispensary, and then you also got at Love Ella Grace. All right, underscore between Love and Ella, um, Love, Love and Ella, and Ella and Grace. Right, yep. gotta check that yes, out. Sir. Um, 
Other than that, like I said again, I'm your boy George D. Got my man Tone Sess, Asia Asia. Got the pop in. You can follow Asia Asia online at Afield1823. Tone Sess at BTB underscore SES. And me at It's George D. We want to thank y'all for listening to episode 167 of Putting Air Podcast. We out. Peace.